Hi, this is Mike Maloney, and I've got Jeff Clark on the line here. Jeff, how are you doing? Good, Mike. Good to be with you again. Yeah. I figured this week we would uh, sort of flip some things around, and I would just sort of spring some charts on you and uh, get your take on what it means. First, I'll, I'll run through it real quick and sort of give you my take and, uh, and what that means for the near future, within the next year or, or so, uh, as far as the economy. These charts are from a website called Mosler Economics, and this is his Center of the Universe page. And what we've got here is an article called Credit Check. And when I look at these uh, uh, charts, they're all from the Federal Reserve's website, which I do quite often. I make charts on it. But this is bank credit at all commercial banks. And this is year-over-year -year growth. And we have a one-year period here from uh, July of 2016 uh, to today, basically. And what you see here is an enormous contraction in the – it's not a contraction. It's a slowing of growth. So it was growing at 8% per year, about 7.5% average uh, last year. And suddenly we're down – to a, a, a little over 3.5% growth year over year on all uh, credit, all bank credit at all commercial banks. And then we've got uh, commercial and industrial loans. And so that's very, very important to the growth of the economy. You're talking about manufacturing here and, and uh, retail and warehousing and everything, commercial and industrial loan loans. And we're, we've gone from 9% or, or, you know, an average that might be just under 9 uh, for the last half of 2016 down to 2. That's an enormous, con it's not a contraction, but enormous slowing. And what I see here in all of these charts is typical of the peak of a bubble and the popping of a bubble. The peak of a bubble, the popping of a bubble. Real estate loans going from uh, this is all real estate loans from all commercial banks, going from an average of about seven and a quarter percent for the last half of 2016, down to four and a half percent. Consumer loans going from eight and a half percent down to four percent. So, you know, the slowdown is by a 50 percent slowdown in the growth of these things. Uh, consumer loans, which is credit cards and other revolving plans, that's different than these consumer loans, going from 9% down to about 4 and a uh, third percent. Uh, consumer loans, other consumer loans like automobile loans and so on, going from almost 9% down to 3%. Uh, real estate loans, these are residential loans only, going from an average of around 4% down to an average of about one and, and uh, a third percent. So this is really anemic. And this is typical, you know, we've had these real estate bubbles in most of the major cities in uh, the U.S. and it's going on in Canada and Australia. The, the world is in a real estate bubble right now. And here you're seeing the peak of a bubble, the popping of a bubble. You know, we're down uh, below one and a half percent growth. And pretty soon, these charts will probably turn negative. Real estate loans, uh, then this is commercial. So, in other words, affecting the retail sector and so on. Going from 11.5% growth down to uh, below 8. So, huge contractions across the board on credit growth. And this is one of the signs of the onset of, an, of a recession. So, what's your take on all of this? Jeff, what do you think? Well, my first reaction is, wow, <laughs> these are some pretty big drops. Mm -hmm. And what's really amazing to me, what really sticks out to me, is that it isn't just one chart you're showing us. It's, it's multiple charts. It's many charts that are all pointing in the same direction. So think about the cumulative effect of all of these things coming to a head all at the same time. Uh, they're clearly all pointing to some type of deflationary uh, outcome. Um, and, and by the way, this corresponds really well with uh, the velocity of money that you've talked so much about and how that's really slowed and that's why we don't have inflation and, and, mm -hmm. and why we will get deflation. Um, and, and this seems to be the beginning of that 
uh, of a significant process working toward that goal. So my feeling is, uh, like I said, wow, the, the, the cumulative effect of all these things happening at the same time uh, could be rather significant. Yeah. And, you know, um, typically, like the last time this happened, uh, real estate peaked in 2006 and seven. And this contraction started, and it wasn't until 2008 that we had the crash, and everything was like on fire at the beginning of 2009. Uh, the, the people were thinking that the world was coming to an end. Uh, and so it, this could take until, you know, the market, the general stock markets could keep on going uh, for a little while longer. It may, might not be until next year that this uh, really takes hold. But this is the same type of sign that we had uh, at the peak in 2007, uh, where things uh, finally started, the, you know, the, the growth direction stopped and then slowed and then reversed. And, um, you know, before we started talking, uh, you were saying that you get an awful lot of uh, emails with people saying, well, if the deflation that I think is going to happen happens, shouldn't they just wait and uh, buy silver when it's down in single digits and buy gold if it drops below a thousand bucks or whatever? And, <laughs> you know, these are all possibilities, but it, it's uh, not uh, something that is definite necessarily. And on top of that, uh, what happens is the paper price diverges from, it's the paper price of gold and silver that goes deflationary, not the physical. The last time around and with the last financial crisis in 2008, uh, the people that didn't have it, uh, that wanted to buy it when it was supposedly cheap, ended up paying a whole lot more for it because the paper price and the physical price diverged so much because they can create as much paper gold and silver gold as they want and sell it and the price goes down. But, uh, when that happens, demand uh, suddenly will go up, especially in the face of a crisis where people are uh, very worried and they run toward the, a safe haven asset. And, uh, and that causes the shortages. N nobody can get it. And, I mean, we had a, a really tough time back in 2008 uh, just uh, acquiring gold and silver for the, our customers. So... Um, uh, what, tell us about the questions you're getting from customers. That that is a, a question that seems to come in fairly regularly. Um, you know, wh why do I need to buy now if deflation is coming and it's a big deflation and it's going to push gold and silver prices down? That that's the main summary of of, of the kind of questions that I get or that I see. Uh, and what I tell people is, well, first of all, look, there's no guarantee that uh, a deflationary event is going to push gold and silver lower. It may, and, and there are examples of that, but it, th that's not a guarantee. Uh, it, right, the last the, great the, deflation pushed it up. Exactly. Uh, and during the Great Depression, uh, you know, one of the worst in, in the history of the United States, uh, yes, gold prices were fixed, but the only gold that citizens could buy, private investors could buy, were gold stocks. And those soared. They were up four and 500 percent, and that's just producers only. So there's, there's no guarantee that it's going to fall. Now, if it does, I, I know that you and I are going to buy a lot more. I'll be turning over couch cushions. But the point is we're prepared for crisis now, and that's what gold and silver are. They're crisis hedge, hedges. And if the deflation is seen as a crisis event that causes fear uh, among the investment community, well, the paper price of gold and silver could just as easily soar as it could fall. So I'm prepared now, and I continue to buy now. I know you continue to buy now. And yes, we will buy more, probably a lot more, if prices do fall a lot. Um, but I, I just don't feel comfortable being completely unprepared with no physical gold and silver in the kind of environment that we're in now. And, and yeah. you know, these charts that you, you know, bring up here, they're like an early warning signal. 
Exactly. Yes, the, the the stock market and the bond market may continue to be in bubbles in the real estate market, uh, but that's not going to last forever. Nothing lasts forever. They will reverse at some point. Whenever that is, I want to be you know ready well, now. So if residential real estate has uh, loans have dropped to less than one and a half percent year over year growth, uh, that means that uh, the real estate bubbles are coming to an end. They're not yeah, going to continue I, growing if if nobody's borrowing to buy a place. Yep, and I, I sent a picture around a few weeks ago to you and everybody else at, at Gold Silver about the picture I snapped uh, one block from my house uh, of a street corner, and it had – I live in Northern California, and it had uh, four different realtor open house signs mm-hmm. on one corner from all different realtors, four of them. For a weekend, and I thought, boy, that's a, that's a sign of a bubble there. If I've ever seen one, that's the kind of thing yeah. I saw here back in 2006. So, I, I mean, it's it's not going to last forever. It doesn't mean it's going to crash this week or next week, but it's coming. I, I think it's pretty easy for us to say it's coming. Yeah, the last recession we had was uh, 2008, early 2009. And so we've gone a, a very long time without a recession. This is now the third longest economic expansion in U.S. history out of, I believe, 47 uh, economic expansions and contractions. Um, and Janet Yellen just said that, uh, that because of changes in regulations and stuff, there won't be another financial crisis in her lifetime. Now, I'm thinking... Either she's been diagnosed with something and told she's only got months to live, or <laughs> or uh, she is totally clueless. Uh, like, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve, these people really don't know what they're doing. They're taking wild-ass guesses. And it's a majority rules thing at the uh, FOMC committee, and they decide how to steer the economy. And when they do this... They interrupt the free market, which is an auto-balancing, uh, self-correcting. It's called an anti-fragile system, where when it breaks, it comes back a little stronger each time. Uh, they're interrupting this natural uh, progression into a stronger and stronger state and uh, blowing bubbles and making it weaker. I can't remember what economist it was, but one of the most famous economists back in the 20s that was a Harvard or Yale professor declared that, uh, that that we were in a new paradigm and we had reached a plateau of permanent prosperity. And I believe that was the day the markets peaked. And then they started <laughs> the crash into, you know, they started the slide that became the crash of 29 and the Great Depression <laughs> as soon yeah, as he said I, that. So I, here we've got I, Janet Yellen basically telling us the same thing. You know, I have to be honest, I had a really good laugh when I saw that. I, I, I couldn't believe that she said that. And I passed that around to a lot of family and friends. And I know we passed it around here at Gold Silver. But I, I just couldn't believe that she would say something that irresponsible. The first thing I thought of, and you probably did too, was when Bernanke said, you know, there is no uh, contagion left in the system or something like that in 2008, just months before the stock market crashed. You know, that things were right. safe, things were stable. Uh, boy, I, I just yeah, can't believe Yeah, these people that have she... such a history of being so incredibly wrong, <laughs> yet they still run things. It's a right. Well, and that alone, and that goes right back to the question everyone's asking, or not everyone, but a lot of people are asking, why buy it now if deflationary is coming? Well, there's a reason right there. <laughs> these people yeah. are telling you there's nothing to worry about, and boy, that's exactly the time you – you want to be a little worried. You want to be stocking up on, on gold and silver. Yeah. So I think we'll end that call with this. Thank you very much. Is there anything uh, you wanted to say in closing the uh, call? I think it's a good time to be buying right now. Um, we, we put out a uh, an article last week about showing up about the seasonality of gold. So uh, it, yeah, but it put any... reaches a low in, in uh, the July area and then rises. Yep. Uh, for the rest of the year, yeah, yeah. So good this article. is a good time to buy. So I, I personally bought um, three different times last week. So uh, I, I bought more silver specifically. Uh, many of them were our products. So I, I just think it's a good time to be doing that. It's a good time to be uh, adding to your ounces if if you're in accumulation mode. 
Yeah. And, um, you know, with uh, the gold silver ratio where it is right now, uh, silver, I, I haven't checked it today, but it's got to be back up near 80 or something like that with the beating that silver has taken lately, which means it's very undervalued compared to gold. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. I'll be making a, a few large purchases uh, this month and, and next and, and uh, getting ready. <laughs> well, that's exactly think, what I'm doing. Yeah, I think that this uh, the event that's coming at us is going to be an enormous event because of the arrogance, uh, the uh, hubris, and uh, the of, of the people that are in charge, these uh, de- deluded Keynesians. And uh, I think uh, that the energy that's released, that this is going to be a really uh, bad event. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, you know, if you remember um, 2008, you know, the, we had... Uh, Bear Stearns, and then things got patched up, and everybody thought things were over, and then along came the Lehman Brothers thing. So it was sort of a two-stage collapse. And uh, I think that um, we're probably in for something like that, where there's going to be some big event, and and then all these Keynesians that are in charge, no problem here, move along, folks, nothing to see. (laughs) Right. Whammo. I agree. I think it's going to be a series of events. There's going to yeah. be more than just one Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns types of things happening. I, yeah. I think it'll be a whole series that's going to hit us. So I and want this, to be ready for that. <laughs> and this time it's really global. I mean, we've got problems in China, uh, Australia, Canada. Uh, it's, um, you know, we had a big problem in Canada un- unraveling and then Warren Buffett, Buffett sort of came in, swooped in and um, uh, sewed up that problem and made I, I was told 13 billion dollars in a single day uh, uh, correcting that banking problem that was going on investing in the bank and buying a bunch of the stock so um, uh, but uh, that does not alleviate the fund the underlying fundamentals that uh, there's people up there that are way underwater on their mortgages and that there's uh, but we've got um, you know, subprime is back, but that's back in the auto loan uh, portion of the economy, which is right here. And so, um, anyway, uh, <clears throat> I'm almost looking forward to uh, some of this. I, I, you know, I've been it's it's been sort of a long wait for the performance of gold and silver, but I have a feeling that uh, this is getting to be just right around the corner here. So, I, I think these charts do serve as an early warning signal, so I, I agree. I think it's something we need to really be prepared for. It's Something's coming. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, again, Jeff is the uh, chief investment strategist for goldsilver.com, and uh, I'm Mike Maloney. Thank you very much for listening.